right, the system, system concepts, Article 16, spiritual society pitfalls. In order to correctly work with a group, we should discern the habits in the spiritual society. Here are a few common mistakes to observe. Number one, they remove the individuals who can help the society reach the goal of adhesion with Creator. These individuals tend to have a huge desire and want to reach the goal. Their burning desire causes conflicts because of their need to criticize, scrutinize, and clean the society from wasteful endeavors. While their behavior must be kept in check, their role is crucial. Number two, people in the society tend to break the unified concept of from love of friends to love of the Creator. They either think they can reach the goal without love of friends, or they, they think they do not need the, the goal, love of the creator, to reach love of friends. Number three, the society becomes a cult with rules and regulations, or becomes so open that pseudo-spiritual pseudo sources are disseminated internally. The cult error happens more with physical groups, while the open error tends to happen with virtual groups. It is very important to be on guard that these common mistakes will not happen in the spiritual group. Even if these mistakes happen in the level of the society, the group must insulate itself from these errors while still mingling with the society. Every phase of relationship is in direct opposition to the phase below it, just like a flower is in opposition to the goal of the soil while still feeding and growing from within it. Here's a quote. However, there is freedom for the will to initially choose such an environment, such books, and such guides that impart to him good concepts. If one does not do that, but is willing to enter any environment that appears to him and read any book that falls into his hands, he is bound to fall into a bad environment or waste his time on worthless books, which are abundant and easier to come by. In consequence, he will be forced into foul concepts that make him sin and condemn. He will certainly be punished, not because of the evil of his evil thoughts or deeds, in which he has no choice, but because he did not choose to be in a good environment. For in that, there is definitely a choice. Therefore, he who strives to continuously, continually choose a better environment is worthy of praise and reward. But here too, it is not because of his good thoughts and deeds, which come to him without his choice, but because of his effort to acquire a good environment, which brings him these good, these good thoughts and deeds. It is as Rabbi Yeshua ben Parchia said, make for yourself a Rav and buy for yourself a friend. From the article, The Freedom by Bala Sulam. Only, our only freedom is to choose our environment. This does not mean we cannot contact anyone without the same goal. It means that even when we connect with them, we put a filter between us to discern what can be used and what cannot be used for the goal. Caution must be used to avoid knee-jerk responses. It is wise to raise doubts within the group and talk about it with each other to reach a common understanding for what is accepted and what is not. Criticism is important, but it's prudent for the person to choose battles wisely and not respond immediately to each issue. Here's a quote. Criticism brings success. Lack of criticism causes decadence. We must further add that reality presents to our eyes extreme oppositeness between physical things and the concepts and ideas regarding the above topic. For the matter of social unity, which can be the source of every joint success, applies particularly among bodies and bodily matters and people, and the separation between them is the source of every calamity and misfortune. But with concepts and ideas, it is the complete opposite. Unity and lack of criticism is deemed the source of every failure and hindrance to all the progress and didactic fertilization. This is because drawing the right conclusions depends particularly on the multiplicity of disagreements and separation between opinions. The more contradictions there are between opinions, the more criticism there is, the more the knowledge and wisdom increase and matters become more suitable for examination and clarification. The degeneration and failure of intelligence stem only from the lack of criticism and disagreement. Thus evidently the whole basis of physical success is the measure of unity of the society and the basis for the success of intelligence and knowledge is the separation and disagreement among them. From the article The Freedom by Bala Sulam. The dichotomy on the path is extreme. We need to connect externally and internally, while at the same time protecting our singularity. It requires a lot of experience to balance them, just like finding the balance between the left and right line. 
to reach the middle line. And here's a quote. Proof of his work by experience. But he who wishes to criticize my words might still ask, although I have thus pr far proven that one must work to benefit people, where is the proof that it has to be done for the creator? Indeed, history itself has troubled in our favor and has prepared for us an established fact sufficient for a full appreciation and unequivocal conclusion. Anyone can see how a large society such as the state of Russia, with hundreds of millions in population, more land than the whole of Europe, second to none wealth in raw materials, and which had already, has already agreed to lead communal life and practically abolished private property altogether, where each worries only about the well-being of society, has seemingly acquired the full measure of the virtue of bestowal upon others in its full meaning, as far as the human mind can grasp. But this nation has sinned, one sin which the Creator will not forgive, that all this precious and exalted work, namely bestowal upon others which they have begun to perform, needs to be for the Creator and not for humanity. And because they do their work not for His name, from nature's point of view, they have no right to exist. If the Creator Himself were the goal of every worker while working for the well-being of society, meaning that the worker would expect this work for society, would reward him with dvekut, adhesion, with him, the source of all goodness and truth and every pleasantness and softness. There is no doubt that within a few years they would rise in wealth over all the countries of the world put together. That is because they would be able to utilize the raw materials in their rich soil, which would truly be, would truly be an example for all countries and would be considered blessed by the Creator. From the article The Peace by Bala Sulam. We need to understand why we will fail if we do not direct ourselves towards the goal. If we want to reach a peaceful and happy society without growing our internal power, and at the same time reducing our external power, we'll be left with no power at all. Capitalistic, capitalist societies are built on raising their external power. The fault of the communistic societies is that they reduce their external power without replacing it with internal power. The problem in the world is not external power, but rather lack of internal power. We need to grow our internal power and the balance will happen naturally with our external power. And here's the first question of the workshop. Why is it important that we discuss these issues in the group? Mark. <clears throat> I think it's necessary to discuss these concepts in a group because uh, by myself, in my head, I come up with the only right answer. Um, when I listen to everybody else's uh, discernments, um, I realize uh, there, there's other ways to look at things. So I need the discernments of others in order to uh, come, come to a better answer. Maybe not the right answer, but, but a, a better answer, something that I can't think of on my own. Robin. Well, like Mark said, uh, we need that, but there's also this, uh, there's all these forces that we're involved in in the environment, the society and ourselves and the discernments we need. So we need to discuss some these things so the focus can be put back toward the goal in, in relation to all of these things come up in the group, in the society. Shelley. When, when we discuss these issues in the group, it helps me to understand some of the concepts and it helps break them up where I understand them more. And it's like everybody adds to the different concepts that they have gotten. And I will be able to look within myself and dig deeper and adjust my perception so that I can understand them better. It's, it's like it's being revealed to me a little bit each time that somebody speaks. And it all connects. 
Um, the reason why it's important to like have criticism in the group and uh, um, and talk about these concepts is to reach. Um, on one hand, you, you want to actually advance. The goal is to actually advance, but you can only advance by investing your desire in the environment. So then you have like a problem. If I only go with my desire, then I'll have full criticism and I'll say the group is terrible and I'll just leave. And that's one option. The other option is to become so invested in the environment that you forget about that you actually need to use the environment to advance. And then you just become kumbaya and you're just like, oh, we're all great. We've all got connection. It's great. And those are just the left and right lines. And we need the middle line where I'm investing my desire in the environment in order for me to advance. And then even when I have criticism, the criticism is about the concepts and not about the people. And even when I identify behavior in people, it's the behavior I care about. Even though there's a name attached to it, it's not the name I care about. It's the behavior. It's the pattern. I want to, to discern how the creator works in the world. Um, Caesar writes, so this way we can find a way to penetrate each other's with different discernments that we don't have and need to keep advancing in a serious manner. And Debbie writes, some groups such as system concepts are aimed towards the goal and some, like others, are aimed towards taking us away from the goal. Um, and I'm using these just as examples. The second question, why is the goal of becoming the creator of absolute importance? Mark. I think that this is of absolute importance because anything else is, uh, I, haven't, I haven't reached uh, the ultimate potential, the ult ultimate goal. Uh, if I can't become the creator, I'm going to get stuck someplace, uh, stuck in phase two and be happy there and plateau, plateau forever. So it's, it's important for me to, to want this and desire this uh, to reach my highest potential. Robin. I agree with Mark. Uh, the goal, having it is primary in your in your thoughts and desires all the time. It's the only thing that consolidates all your experience with with all of your environments to and allows you to help allows you to use it to to, to reach the goal. Debbie writes, when we become the creator, we realize each person is part of us and we realize what connection really is. And Caesar writes, um, the goal of creation, go against the goal is going against your own self. Um, the reason why the goal is very important, one of the first signs of plateauing is when you lose the goal uh, and you focus on everything but the goal. You're like, oh, you know, the, the group is not, uh, there's no integrity in the group um, or uh, um, uh, people, or, you know, you see other people plateauing and, and the, the importance of the group is just your focus point. You need to focus your desire on actually reaching something. And those that lose the goal, it means they just don't want to advance. They don't want to reach anything. I agree. Um when when we see that we are the creator or when we have that goal of being the creator then we see the connection between all of us as the creator and um that's why it's very important because it builds that connection jeffrey writes yes along the way we can lose focus the group will keep us sharp Um, the third question is, how can we balance criticism in the group? Mark. How can we balance criticism? By the, the, the different opinions. Um, in other words, if uh, Caesar attacks somebody or if Caesar has a strong uh, opinion about something or criticizes, uh, there's six other people or five other people to uh, 
have a different opinion on this or, or a different take on this. So I think it, it, it helps uh, take the edge off of uh, criticism and gives us more, more discernment. Robin. Uh, I'm not sure I fully understand the question, but if uh, how do you balance it? You balance criticism by disgusting, and I, I think you have to take it on at face value and, and not get emotionally excited about it. You, you rationally look at it and discuss it that way, balance it that way. Shelley. You don't take the criticism personal. Um, sometimes that criticism can throw you into a descent, but if you take it personal, it, it, it can be very um, destructive if you feel angry and divert your thoughts of um, anger towards that person. So you don't want to take any of it personal. Jeffrey writes, remaining tactful, diplomatic, and polite. I've always said others are entitled to their opinions, no matter how wrong they are. Um, and Debbie writes, by keeping us focused on the goal, when a friend speaks, we listen, as if we are having a conversation with the creator. Um, I would say, um, just a second. Um, and Caesar writes, knowing better than, um, understand that they are fighting to advance and we've got to respect that. We don't see many people in this world really taking this serious. There's two kinds of criticism. There's physical criticism is when, for example, let's say someone's doing something wrong in the society. The society says to do one thing and you're doing the opposite. Um, that is a physical kind of criticism. Um, and that shouldn't be taken spiritually, it should be taken physically. And the idea is that you can actually, you know, if, for example, you know, say to the person, to the authorities or to the social community or whatever it is, um, you do that and you don't start saying, oh, there's none else besides him, the creator's behind it all, I just need to accept the way he is. You have to actually go by the laws and regulations that society decides. When we're talking about spiritual criticism, we're talking about criticism about concepts. So it's not about the people behind those concepts even though the people behind those concepts will take that into account in, let's say, their, their degree, their, their phase, right? So we might say, oh, the, he's in phase two, so therefore his discernments will be of a certain value, and I need to invert them accordingly because then I'm in phase three. Well, if someone's in phase three and I'm on that, let's say, that same phase, then the inversion I'll have to do is much less since they're more or less in my same sort of psyche, my same phase. Um, but still, the, the criticism is on the discernments of what discernments will bring me closer to the goal and what discernments won't bring me close to the goal. So the criticism was on the discernments and not on the people behind it. What do you think of the article? I really liked it. Um, if you could post that back up before we're done here, uh, I think it was on page 72 towards the bottom was uh, something I don't think I quite, there was a concept there I didn't quite grasp. It seemed really interesting that I wasn't, uh, it, it went by too quick for me. Where do you want me to scroll to? Was it a quote or was it the... Uh, um the extras. I think it was part of the text. This but is the sentence, yeah. Uh, wait, what, what's this? Uh, criticism brings success. Lack of criticism brings decadence. Yeah, this is about a some quote from the Freedom. Do you want me to reread it? Now, that doesn't... That doesn't look... That doesn't look right. Um, I'm, I might have been wrong on 72. 
What was the thing you're remembering? Well, it 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 seemed to me what whatever the concept was, it like everything else, there was two different ways to look at it, and I was struggling as you read through it, and and I you read through it, and I was trying to read it and make sense of it, and then then it moved on. So whatever it was, I I missed it. What was this? Um, it... Go back up just a little bit, Zakai, please. There, I think it's the degeneration and failure of intelligence. That that paragraph, and maybe the previous paragraph needs to be read too. But if you could re reread that. But with concepts and ideas, it is the complete opposite. Unity and lack of criticism is deemed the source of every failure and hindrance to all the progress and didactic fertilization. This is because drawing the right conclusions depends particularly on the multiplicity of disagreements and separation between opinions. The more contradictions there are between opinions and the more criticism there is, the more the knowledge and wisdom increase and matters become more suitable for examination and clarification. The degeneration and failure of intelligence stem only from the lack of criticism and disagreement. Thus evidently the whole basis of physical success is the measure of unity of the society and the basis for the success of intelligence and knowledge is a separation and disagreement among them. That, that's way better. <clears throat> the, the second time through, it, it was the, the beginning of that last paragraph, the degeneration and failure of intelligence stem only from the lack of criticism and disagreement. It, it makes sense now. I'm, I followed it. Somehow I got off track while you were reading it. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Um, it's 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 funny because you basically have to hold both those dichotomies at the same time. On one hand, you have to have uh, disagreement and criticism, but on the other hand, you need unity of the society. It's like, well, how can I have unity of the society if I have criticism in the society? It's like that's the dichotomy you need. You need that tension. Where on one hand, you're continuing going to society even though you don't agree with them. You're continuing to invest in society even though um, you have lots of criticism and and um, disagreement with them. And like normally what happens, if someone disagrees with something, he leaves. And if he feels great about the society and has no criticism whatsoever, then he's investing a lot in the society. And the idea is to like have both of them with you. On one hand, that, have that separation, that growth within you, that actually causes that separation from the society because they still stay in phase two and you're advancing to phase three and phase four. So on one hand, you feel that separation. But on the other hand, physically, externally, you're still in the environment. You're still investing in society. You're still going to the lessons. You're still... Uh, you know, learning from the books, you're still doing all the society activities that they're doing, like you were doing before when you were in phase two. One of the things I tell people is that when you advance, you have to keep the same kind of framework you were keeping in phase two. That is, when you were with, with agreement and acknowledgement of the society, even when you grow to higher phases of the group and the individual, it is to still keep the same framework you had in phase two. It, it, it seems that it's forever the, the dichotomy. Um, be, between blind acceptance and disagreement or criticism, but there, there's always uh, everything that we, all the concepts that we ever cover, it, it's always this dichotomy. We try to find the middle ground because it provides this contrast. It's like the idea that when you pass the barrier, you have that huge egoism that you've built in that phase four, and you have the screen that converts into altruism, which is off the barrier. So you're living in these two states. On one hand, you're this most very egoistic person, but on the other hand, your sense of self is not that egoism. Rather, your sense of self is in that altruism, and you're using your ego. The difference to, between someone before the barrier and after the barrier, before the barrier, you're, you are your ego. You feel your sense of self as the ego. That's why you get angry, you, sort of, you get clouded, you get blindsided, because you're in the ego itself. You're feeling that emotional bubble sort of like cover you, cover your eyes. When you're past the barrier, even when you're using your ego, you're not, you're not emotionally tied to it. So even though your body is getting very angry and very emotional, you can still keep that ego very directed, very on point. Like one of the things that happens when normally people go into criticism, at the beginning they talk about the concept that they actually want to criticize, and then they go into name calling. And then they fall into that, like, you know, you know what your problem is? Your problem is that you're ugly. Uh, your problem is you're an idiot, right? And they just go into all this name calling and they forget about the, the concept that they were trying to, trying to clarify in the first place. After the barrier, that doesn't happen because you have 
you're still using your ego. So you're still able to get angry. It's not like you're like holy, like, oh, I don't feel anything. That's called someone who's sick. You're, you're, on one hand, you have this ego and you're getting angry, but on the end, you're able to keep that anger very on point and, and keep it only about the concepts and never fall into that name calling because you're using your ego instead of feeling that you are your ego. Oh, go ahead, Shelley. Sorry. I was just going to say, can't you get stuck, though, even after you pass a barrier that um, with your ego being too ego egoistic and um, thinking that you know everything? I'm not saying, I'm not talking about you, but I'm just talking about uh, a particular person, you know, being very egotistical and uh, thinking that they know all the answers and um, they really don't have everything, but you know, you know what I'm saying? Well, I would say like this, one of the advantages of passing the barrier is that as long as your screen is active, you don't fall into those kind of situations. When your screen is inactive, which is normally a descent, then you're feeling, um, lack of security and confidence anyway, so you probably won't feel like that either. Um, so I'd say the thing that causes a person to get into that, that, that state of mind of sort of feeling like, you know, I know everything, which is basically plateauing, um, is normally because you're before the barrier. You don't, because you, you feel your sense of self as the ego. And if you have an ego, you might be able to act very egotistical and sort of, um, claim that you know uh, sort of so much more than people below the barrier. But from your perspective, when you look to high states, you see that you know nothing. So I would also separate between confidence, um, which is actually faith, right? So the more faith you have, it actually you have more confidence. And you're very focused and you're very clear of the exclusivity of what you're doing. And you don't sort of, sometimes people feel that if you feel that you're exclusive about something, though that means that you're sort of plateauing or that means that you're sort of not allowing for other opinions to exist. And, that, and that's not true. We can definitely see with Bala Salaam, he's very exclusive. Um, he's very critical and he's very direct. He doesn't say like, well, you know, maybe Russia could be right, could be wrong. He's like, they were wrong. It's like, hey, well, you know, how are you so sure? Like, um, and, and the idea is that, you, that confidence plays out very... Um, very focused. So on one hand, you, you have this full ego, this faithful ego, which just keeps you very egotistical, but very focused, right? Um, but on the other hand, it's targeted. You have the goal in mind, you have that bestow, you have that intention to take that focus of the ego and direct it towards a direction. What are you going to say, Robin? I was just going to say that there, there's opposition in all things, and that's the only way to advance no matter what level you're on. Well, you know, I've, I've said this many times, the only flaw of the stall is that it's flawless. And you could be like, well, how's that a flaw? Well, it's a flaw that if you touch it, you die. And you're like, what, if I touch the stall, I die? It's like, the Torah has said that it's the potion of life and the potion of death. How can that be? Like, I can understand why it's life, but how can it also be death? Well, it's very simple. If I touch the stole and I don't have a screen, I'll instantly plateau and feel like I've gone there and I've got nowhere to move forward because I feel flawless. I feel perfection. Right? So if I touch that bestow without an opposing egoism, I'll plateau and I'll just, there'll be nothing to move me forward because it's like I've reached perfection. That's it. And the whole idea that we need the dichotomy of the where we need the screen, that on one hand we have this huge egoism, which is like a deficiency, a desire to move forward. And on the other hand, we feel the sense of self, though, as altruism, as bestowal, as internal power. Um, because we have both of them, we can still feel perfection and move from perfection to perfection because we have this ego with this deficiency that we can use to move us forward. So part of the problem is people think that they want to reach altruism without the ego. 
Well, the problem is if you actually were able to reach altruism without the ego, you'd pl plateau for life and wouldn't do a thing. You'd basically just die. Because you'd be frozen. You'd be like, I'm flawless. I, I don't need to do anything. I just feel a sensation of wholeness. So why do anything? The world is full. The world is whole. The world is perfect. Like, I'll just stay in my home and do nothing. So to avoid that situation, that's what you have the ego to give you on one hand this deficiency to constantly move forward. And that's why you're restricted. You go above it. Right? You never actually, when you pass a barrier, you don't start doing a, uh, a celebration that, oh, I passed a barrier. Let's, you know, let's you know, relax for a few months. You're still very hungry and want to move forward. It's like, but you become what you wanted. You had a desire to become the creator and you became the creator. It's like, relax, have fun, have a party, you know, invite some people over and say, yeah, I'm finally the creator. That doesn't happen. Well, why doesn't it happen? Because you're not actually allowing that phase four to be filled. You're, you're keeping it in a state of deficiency. Right? You're allowing it to f be filled for the future, but not actually allow it to feel that filling in its present tense. So it stays, it stays in a constant yearning state. Right? And that's why it, it's powerful, right? It has yearning. It's not filled and then like it's dead. Right? That's the thing of the ego. You fill it and it's over. So you keep it in this constant state of deficiency while feeling your sense of self not as that deficiency. You're feeling your sense of self as perfection. And that's where you're able to move from perfection to perfection because you have this ego within you, which is, is like your fuel. It, it drives you forward. The other small decision I made here is in the past, criticism has always meant uh, something really negative to me because it was attached to the ego. Here I see that there can be a, a, a criticism without any attachment of emotion at all, and you can use this for um, – expanding your knowledge i mean or or um uh, yeah it, it it it's it's a criticism that's positive if the ego is detached from it well there's actually a lot of ego there's a lot of emotion in those in that criticism the difference is it doesn't tie you down it doesn't like engulf you right so normally what happens is when you get emotional about something you sink in it and you're lost in it and you can't even have it like a, you can't even think actually when you're like like when someone's angry you can't like give them logic they're angry. They're like, no, you pissed me off and, and, and we need to get rid of him. It's like, but I'm trying to give you here some logic to actually say why we still need him. It's like, no, I'm not going to hear it anymore. I'm angry. And that's what happens when you fall in the ego and you sort of just like sort of um, you, uh, you uh, like plateau in that sensation of anger. But when you, when you have your screen, you're able to sen sense yourself outside of the situation, but still be emotionally actually attached to the situation. Right? But the idea is you're using it instead of being in it. So it's still emotional. It's not you're like, oh, let's think. Like that's philosophy, right? When you're just like, like talking about concepts you have no emotional attachment to. And that's why like Badaslam many times talks about how philosophers love to talk about the essence. You can't actually feel any emotion about the essence since the whole idea of the essence is it has no details. It has no discernments whatsoever. So then you can have no emotional connection to it whatsoever and you can start you know, philosophizing of is the essence like this? Is the essence like that? The definition of the essence is that you can't actually attain anything in it. Um, so the idea is that it has to include both mind and emotion. And the problem is normally when we get, we sink into emotion, we lose our mind. And when we sink into our mind, we lose our emotion. So you have this screen to allow you to live in both, to be very focused and very mindful and have lots of thoughts and discernments while still being very emotionally attached to the situation. Can I say something about criticism? Um, in, I don't know, I guess phase four. Um, tell me if I'm wrong, that when you, as the phase four, criticizes, it, it, am I correct in saying that the sensation of feeling that it's it's as if you were criticizing, but not criticizing the person, but criticizing the situation, and not and but uh, and it wasn't intended as a, like a personal attack, but but as just a situational like if you're doing this, then don't you see that this is happening kind of thing? But at the um, or maybe be, maybe you have to be. Uh, ex having those criticisms with uh, someone that's at the same phase, that they would understand that that's what that criticism was, not a personal attack, but just 
um, I don't know if I'm making sense, not a personal attack, but criticizing what potentially was holding the other person back. Is, is that um, realistic? What I'm trying to say is, is does that happen in a, in a phase four? When we reach um, phase four, right? It's uh, about discernment. So your motivation is discernment now, not emotion, which was in phase three. And when you reach that 4.1, you basically, um, especially in that 4.1.3, when you feel that darkness of, of doubts, right? So the, the war of Amalek is called 4.1, the doubts, where you basically have loads of doubts about so much, so many discernments. So you're, you're sort of more mature, right? And that's why the emotion, you lose that sort of emotional push that you had in phase three, because you actually mature, you actually are able to do things without having to have that emotional push behind you which in phase three, you needed that emotional push to get you to do anything. And in, in phase four, you're, able to, you're more mature, so you're able to do things out of discernments. You're able to be pulled by your discernments. And you actually become very egoistic in phase four, and your criticism goes up high enormously. Like you could have someone in 3.2, and the criticism is like, like that small, and then they pass into phase four, and it just starts to grow exponentially, their criticism. They have so many discernments, and it's about the conduct. So the difference is, you know, you know, Balaslam says in, in, um, in the teaching of the Kabbalah, in its essence, um, uh, once we have learned about the purpose, it is also clear to us that all the conducts of creation and its every corner, inlet, and outlet are completely prearranged for the purpose of nurturing the human species from its midst to improve its qualities until it consents the creator as one feels one's friend. Right? So the idea is that when we're, when phase four is looking at people, it's not trying to say whether the person is good or bad. It's trying to look at the conduct and applying it to itself. Is that good or bad for me? So he will express, they'll express themselves as this is good or this is bad, but what they're actually saying, this is good or bad for me. For the other person, it might be totally fine what they're doing. For me, it's like total failure. Like the other person is plateauing and I'm terrified that if I do that, I'll plateau. The other person, that's fine. He wants to be where he is. That's his desire, and that's totally okay. But for me, who's discerning it, I see that as a terrible no-no. I see that as a terrible um, a place to be, that you know, you'll, if you don't do this, you, you won't advance. And you'll, you'll, you'll give out a lot of criticism, and other people which, which aren't in the state will look at you like, wow, you've just become so egoistic. You're such an animal. Um, what's happened to you? You used to be a nice person. Now you're just like a monster. And... Um, and then it sometimes can deter them from wanting to advance because they're like, oh, you know, if this is what I'm going to become, maybe this path is not for me. But it's again about this dichotomy that w we go from full egoism to true, true altruism. We need to, in, in, when we reach, 4.1 is doubt. 4.2 is that sense of responsibility that I'm feeling that I have to be responsible um, for my entire experience, including my past especially my past that brought me to where I am and my present, that everything that's happening is always because I'm wanting it to happen either consciously or subconsciously. When you reach 4.3, it's vulnerable. You reach this vulnerability and this vulnerability is because beforehand a person is constantly clothing themselves with all the different actions of bestow. They don't actually want to feel that they're egoistic. So what they do is they constantly do all these little actions of bestow to give them like a clothing. Like, oh, I'm not really egoistic because look, I do charity. Or I can't really be egoistic. Look, I'm like helping the group and I'm cleaning their concepts. You can see I'm not such a nice person. When you reach that 4.3, you basically have to become spiritually naked. You have to feel like you have no altruistic clothes on you. That anything you're doing, you're doing the same actions as you were doing before, but you have to do them egoistically. You have to do them for the... The, for the sole reason of for you to advance and not for anybody else to advance and not for anybody else to have good in the world and not to be nice to anybody else. You're doing it for the sole reason for you to receive the primacy of the creator, which is the quality of the stone. And it's, it's just so hard for us to let go of it because it's so much easier for us to constantly like clothe ourselves with these, with these clothes of the stone, with these clothes of goodness, like I'm a good person. And it's just so hard for us to give that up and become naked with concepts, meaning that we don't have those clothings of altruism because we don't want our altruism to be about actions. We want to shift to the situation where our altruism is about states, that I'm in a state of altruism, 
That means I can be in my house, past the barrier, sitting on my couch doing nothing, and I'm being in a state of altruism. And we ne we're never taught about this. We're always taught about actions of altruism. If I'm sitting on the couch doing nothing, at that moment, I'm not doing anything altruistic. And the idea is that when you become part of the creator, when you pass the barrier, you're in a state of altruism. The creator doesn't have to actually do anything to be altruistic. It's a state. You're in a total state of altruism. When your screen is active, you're, you're, you're bestowing to the world. You're, you're, you're influencing the world, Con uh, subconsciously and consciously. Well, the, the uh, strategy of going back to the group and working in uh, other phases with other phases to um, continue to increase the, in, the internal power. Um, there's a point where it's you just annoyed the entire time and you know you're there and you know that you, okay I, everything you just said about not giving and I'm not trying to bestow anything because I know I can't so I'm there to discern but it's annoying it you know because you understand and you have a perception of the writings or um, and you well you're just annoyed it's just it's just annoying and and I know it's an opportunity to work but I'm finding it really challenging I, I totally agree with you and the idea is to um, one of the thoughts sometimes is like well then why do I need this nonsense but precisely be because it annoys you that can actually give you great fuel to advance um, you're feeling the dichotomy remember the whole idea is that reach that intensity right and that hatred or that or that discomfort um, of the concepts they're given phase two because it's mostly the concepts that bother you not the actual people or it's the, the concepts that those people say that bothers you and that sort of that hate can actually give you all the fuel you, you actually need to pass the barrier and that's why we say that you need all the four phases you need that tension from all the phases to just give you that fuel that desire to actually receive that quality of bestow, to, to move the sense of self. So even though after the barrier, you'll still get angry, you'll still get upset with, um, with uh, concepts of lower phases that are wrong, um, but your sense of self is not aligned to that. So your body is like hearing it and saying, this is total nonsense, but it's, you feel the sense of detachment even though you're attached. It's, it's like hard to express. It's like you, you see someone in phase two, and they're saying that, say, for example, uh, it's all about the connection, let's say. So you have two discernments after the barrier. On one hand, you're like, okay, so this is a phase two person. So when they're saying it's all about connection, on one hand, they're right, and on one hand, they're wrong. They're wrong because they're thinking only of the connection, not thinking of the goal. But on the other hand, they're actually right because by connection, you'll actually reach the goal if you have the goal. So they're right about it's all about connection of your desire into the environment. The problem is that they have a dirty concept of saying that it's all about just the connection and not with my desire. I just have to be there without my desire. And the correct concept of that is it's all about connection, meaning how I invest my desire in the environment. So then you have sort of two understandings of the same concept that they're talking to you. So on one hand, you're like, you disagree with the phase two dirty concept of it. But on the other hand, you're actually hearing the correct concept. So then you have this sort of like dichotomy in you. And it's sort of, um, you could say, on one hand, it increases the tension, but reduces the frustration, if that makes sense. Yes, um, it, it's, it gives us contrast, right? If you remember when we learned in the TS, we learned about the dark room. So normally dark is considered as a bad thing, but dark room is great if you actually want to develop photos and you want to be able to see the contrast of them. You want to allow um, specific details to be seen and not everything. You don't want to be overloaded. You don't want to be overloaded with emotions. You want to be able to like, sort of allow certain emotions within you and dissect them and learn them. And the, you know, one of the things that happens after the barrier when we're building basically our five phases, parts of him, of Adam Kadmon, of Ak, um, mm -hmm. those are, are uh, 
different relationship, internal relationships, because it's internal, it's in, it's in the calculation part of how to relate to the different phases that you'll use afterwards when you re- pass the parcel, when you start to receive in order to bestow. And one of the things is that when you're building these phases, the numbers go down. So you go from um, a view of, let's say, phase four to a view of phase one. And you're like, wait a second, isn't the screen um, meant to get stronger? Why is it like reducing its strength? The idea is it's not reducing its strength, it's becoming more delicate. So in, 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 at the beginning, when you get your first face of Galgalta, you're, you're saying, um, I'm only allowing in employees. So anyone who's not an employee has to stay out. So that's like phase four. Most of the world is you know, not an employee of the company. So you're only letting employees of the company in. Then afterwards, you, let, you push everybody out again. And then you're saying, only managers are allowed in. That's already more discernment, right? So it's not just, are you, do you have an employee tag card? I have to know now, are you just a normal employee or are you a manager, right? That's already requires more um, uh, details, right? It's more um, delicate. And then you say afterwards, okay, everybody out. Now I'm only allowing VPs in, right? Only vice presidents in. It's like, what, are, you, uh, are you an employee? Yes, I'm an employee. Are you a manager? Yes, I'm a manager. So I can go in, right? No, are you a VP? No, I'm not a VP. You're not allowed in. So the idea is that you're actually allowing less um, light in because you're able to actually discern more of it. And it's the total opposite of what we would normally think. We think that if I'm receiving everything, then that's good. It's like, no, the whole idea is that we want to receive less and less because we want to um, discern more details in it. We want to know, uh, feel it more. We want to sense it more. And the more coming in, the less we can sense. And the more we can be delicate about our weight, right? It's like, it's like a weight. It's much easier to build a weight system to handle you know, human weight than it is to know the weight of a diamond. Right? For a weight of a diamond, the, 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 it has to be much more precise in the numbers. In the weight of a human, you could be like, oh, so it's 100 grams more or less, who cares? But in the diamond, you know, that, that 100 grams more or less is, is you know, so much money. So it requires so much more delicacy that we're not normally used to. We're normally thinking of, like, I'll just receive everything, which is that boundless light. You're receiving everything. But you can't discern anything. You can't attain anything. Well, why not? Because you receive everything, you, you don't have that, you, you, um, you need that, you need that detail. You need that, that, that pre- pre- precise targeting. And that's what we get as our screen improves. Did that make sense? <laughs> I think so. You know, and today in the, in, in the internet age, the problem is not knowledge. The problem is there's too much knowledge. And we actually go to all different websites that filter out that information, right? We go to like um, websites that um, bring in the news to one place. They're aggregators and they focus on a certain concept. It's like, well, why don't we receive all the news? Well, there's so much news. I can't receive all the news. It'd be like me having to register all the Twitter accounts. I can't have that like coming in. I won't ever read anything. It'll be like just endless information. So what I do is I only have a certain amount of friends and I limit the amount of friends I can actually see. And I limit the amount of stories I want to see in a day. It's like, if you're limiting yourself, that's bad, isn't it? It's like, no, it's good because I want to have focus. If I'm seeing everything, I'm seeing nothing. If I'm allowing all the light, it's like an aperture on a camera, right? If you light all the light in, you don't see a picture. It's like, you've got all the light, congratulations. Like, but I can't see anything. I need to actually restrict it. I need to restrict my aperture. I need to allow that only a certain amount of light can go in because I want to actually see a picture. I want to see certain details. I want to see some areas lighter and some areas uh, darker. And, um, and that's what the screen enables us. And we can, that's why we can only give names and appellations on our ego when we're above our ego, when we pass that barrier, when we look down our ego and we're able to discern. With our screen, we allow a bit of the ego to go in. We're like, oh, hmm, I see that. That's how that person behaves. Or that's how I behave. Well, before, you couldn't even see your own behavior because you were in your ego. You were below the barrier. You weren't able to see yourself as well as you can see yourself afterwards. You were able to discern so much patterns and behavior things that you were doing that you just weren't able to see when you were actually inside the ego before the barrier without feeling that sense of self higher and the screen to allow only certain details to come in to able to actually discern to give names and appellations to creation. That was clear, thank you.
Should I read the article again? Let's read it again. Sure. I think that'd be great. Let's read it again. 16, spiritual, wait, no, I'm not sure yet, sorry. Number 16, spiritual society pitfalls. In order to correctly work with the group, we should discern the habits in the spiritual society. Here are a few common mistakes to observe. Number one, they remove the individuals who can help the society reach the goal of adhesion with the creator. These individuals tend to have a huge desire and want to reach the goal. Their burning desire causes conflicts because of their need to criticize, scrutinize, and clean the society from wasteful endeavors. While the behavior must be kept in check, their role is crucial. Number two, people in the society tend to break the unified concept of from love of friends to love of the creator. They either think they can reach the goal without the love of friends, or they think they do not need the goal, love of the creator, to reach love of friends. And three, the society becomes a cult with rules and regulations, or becomes so open that pseudo-spiritual sources are disseminated internally. The cult era happens more with physical groups, while the open era tends to happen with virtual groups. It is very important to be on guard that these common mistakes will not happen in the spiritual group. Even if these mistakes happen in the level of the society, the group must insulate itself from these errors while still mingling with the society. Every phase of relationship is in direct opposition to the phase below it, just like a flower is in opposition to the goal of the soil while still feeding and growing from within it. Here's a quote. However, there is freedom for the will to initially choose such an environment, such books, and such guides that impart to him good concepts. If one does not do that, but is willing to enter any environment that appears to him and read any book that falls into his hands, he is bound to fall into a bad environment or waste his time on worthless books, which are abundant and easier to come by. In consequence, he will be forced into foul concepts that make him sin and condemn. He will certainly be punished, not because of his evil thoughts or deeds, in which he has no choice, but because he did not choose to be in a good environment, for in that there is definitely a choice. Therefore, he who strives to continue to choose a better environment is worthy of praise and reward, but here too is not because of his good thoughts and deeds, which come to him without his choice, but because of his effort to acquire a good environment, which brings him these good thoughts and deeds. It is as Rabbi Yeshua ben Parachia said, make for yourself a rav and buy for yourself a friend. From the article, The Freedom, by Bala Sulam. Our only freedom is to choose our environment. This does not mean we cannot contact anyone without the same goal. It means that even when we connect with them, we put a filter between us to discern what can be used and what cannot be used for the goal. Caution must be used to avoid knee-jerk responses. It is wise to raise doubts within the group and talk about it with each other to reach a common understanding for what is accepted and what is not. Criticism is important, but it's prudent for a person to choose battles wisely and not respond immediately to each issue. Criticism brings success. Lack of criticism causes decadence. This is a quote. We must further add that reality presents to our eyes extreme oppositeness between physical things and the concepts and ideas regarding the above topic. For the matter of social unity, which can be the source of every joy and success, applies particularly among bodies and bodily matters in people, and the separation between them is the source of every calamity and misfortune. But with concepts and ideas, it is the complete opposite. Unity and lack of criticism is deemed the source of every failure and a hindrance to all progress and didactic fertilization. This is because drawing the right conclusions depends particularly on the multiplicity of disagreements and separation between opinions. The more contradictions there are between opinions and the more criticism there is, the more the knowledge and wisdom increase and matters become more suitable for examination and clarification. The degeneration and failure of intelligence stem only from the lack of criticism and disagreement. Thus, evidently, the whole basis of physical success is the measure of unity of the society, and the basis for the success of intelligence and knowledge is the separation and disagreement among them. From the article The Freedom by Bala Sulam.
The dichotomy on the path is extreme. We need to connect externally and internally while at the same time protecting our singularity. It requires a lot of experience to balance them, just like finding the balance between the left and right line to reach the middle line. Here's a, here's a quote. Proof of his work by experience. But he who wishes to criticize my words might still ask, although I have thus prove, far proven that one must work to benefit the people, where is the proof that it has to be done for the creator? Indeed, history itself has troubled in our favor and has prepared for us an established fact sufficient for a full appreciation and unequivocal conclusion. Anyone can see how a large society such as the state of Russia, with hundreds of millions in population, more land than the whole of Europe, second to none wealth in raw materials, and which has already agreed to lead communal life and practically abolish, abolished private property altogether, where each worries only about the well-being of the society, has seemingly acquired the full measure of the virtue bestowal upon others in its full meaning as far as the human mind can grasp. But this nation has sinned one sin which, is the creator, which the Creator will not forgive, that all this precious and exalted work, namely bestowal upon others, which they have begun to perform, needs to be for the Creator and not for humanity. And because they do their work not for His name, from nature's point of view, they have no right to exist. If the Creator Himself were the goal of every worker while working for the well-being of society, meaning that the worker would expect this work for a society, would reward him with vicut adhesion with him, the source of all goodness and truth, and every pleasantness and softness, there is no doubt that within a few, with, that within a few years they would rise in wealth over all the countries of the world put together. That is because then they would be able to utilize the raw materials in the rich soul, which truly would truly be an example for all the countries and would be considered blessed by the Creator. From the article, The Peace, by Bala Sunam. We need to understand why we will fail if we do not direct ourselves towards a goal. If we want to reach a peaceful and happy society without growing our internal power and at the same time reducing our external power, will we be left with no power at all? Capitalistic societies are built on raising their external power. The fault of the communistic societies is that they reduce their external power without replacing it with internal power. The problem in the world is not external power, but rather lack of internal power. We need to grow our internal power and the balance will happen naturally with our external power. What do you think? Very clear and like a roadmap. I think uh, the timing of it is actually very good, especially of uh, of this week. I think uh, the article is uh, is right on time. Well, one of the main points I seem to have picked up the second reading through this was it really is all about internal power. And if we can achieve internal power, then uh, the external, uh, as, as that last uh, part of the reading said, uh, will balance itself out naturally. But what we seek and what we need and what we, part of this goal is internal power. You know, it's known, you know, when psychologists like analyze like uh, um, uh, big, uh, like um, powerful people, they normally like talk about how they, you know, internally were feeling very deficient and they didn't have love and they didn't have that confidence so they had to like express it so externally to constantly like justify their, 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 their emptiness internally. And the idea is that if you have that internal power within you, you just, you're still doing external stuff. But you're not doing it to prove a point to anybody. You're not doing it to even prove a point to yourself. You're using it, you're using it instead of it using you. Um, and, and we'll see this happen a lot with celebrities, that the celebrities that sort of crash and burn, 
it's when they, they, um, they let the fame take them as, as slaves. And those which are able to successfully still have fame but not, not lose themselves, it's when they're using the fame instead of letting the fame use them. Any last thoughts before we wrap this up? I find that really interesting in the second reading that I could see that you have written it from all the phase perspectives, and I didn't see that the first time through at all. Yeah, the idea is that the the concepts are meant to be timeless and, and phaseless, you could say. So unless you're talking about a specific phase like this, you know, 4.2 feels like that or 4.3 feels like that, even those are actually timeless as well because even when you're in higher phases, you still have those phases active in you. So it's not like you move from 4.2 to 4.3 and then you're no longer dealing with sense of responsibility and now you're dealing with the vulnerability, but rather you're now adding another layer to yourself. It's like before and I was worried about my sense of responsibility and now I'm also having to worry about my vulnerability so every phase you go through you add it's like you know 1.1 is you know we said you know sex family and food and then in 1.2 you've got uh, um, money knowledge and you know and and uh, honor and you don't lose the need for money sex and family it gets added to it your focus becomes that that new that higher degree but you're still having you still have that active design you for the lower one and then when you reach that 1.3, which is that, you know, pseudo, um, uh, like spirituality or religion, things like that, you, you're, not, you're not losing your desire now for money, uh, honor and knowledge. It's added. The, the idea is each time you're adding new desires onto your previous desires, your focus is always on the new state, but you still have those other states active in you. And that's why even when you're, let's say, in, you know, 4.3, when you hear new discernments about 3.1, it matters to you because you still have the 3.1 within you. You still have that focus and that knowing the goal within you. So that's one of the difference between physical states and spiritual states. In physical states, if I go from one thing to another, I'm no longer in the first state. I'm in the, in the new state only. It's like if I go from the post office to the supermarket, I'm no longer in the post office. I'm not also in the post office and also in the supermarket. I'm either in one or the other. And that's how it is with the physical state. And with the spiritual state, you're in both. You're, you're also before the barrier and after the barrier. You're also... Uh, in phase one and phase two and phase three and phase four at the same time. It's like, so where's your sense of self? Your sense of self is always in the highest degree, unless you're plateauing and fall into a shell and then your sense of self moves to a low degree, even though you're, you've got more states, right? But you're, you've always got the states within you and you build on each time. In the very beginning of that reading, did I understand correctly that each phase is the opposite of the phase before it? There are diametrically opposed totally and and one thing is that you know i can say this as many times as i want when you actually experience it that's when you sense the dichotomy between the phases so you're like well phase two society and phase two is a group how dichotomy could they be well the truth is that they're very dichotomy phase two is all about altruism without self-benefit you're not meant to think of yourself you're only meant to think of the friends and in phase three you're meant to shift to thinking about yourself and you're meant to sort of want that internal power and you want to actually want to get a reward for your efforts and you're focusing on concepts and not on actions. Right? Phase two is all about actions. It's what the next action to do. And even if there's an intention, it's applied to an action. In phase three, it's all about the concepts. That's a huge dichotomy because even though you can continue doing the actions because we said the states are, are built on top of each other, your sense of self, your, all your enjoyment won't be from actions anymore. 
like before when you're in phase two, you loved the actions, and you're like, oh, what's the next Congress, or what's the next thing we're gonna do, and the next dissemination project. And that was where your, your livelihood came from, these constant change of actions. When you reach phase three, it loses its power. You're just less concerned about the actions, and we care about the discernments you might collect at that place. You don't care about the Congress, you care about the discernments you collect in Congress. You care about the concepts, about the ways you're gonna look at people and how they move and how they act. You're not caring about the sort of the actual sort of enjoyable experience of the, situ the action itself, but rather what you're going to get collect from it, what you're going to attain from it, what you're going to sort of discern from it. So that is already to show you like the dichotomy. Or for example, phase three looks at phase four and says, what's this egoism about? In phase three, it's about, you know, we're meant to still connect together and feel that equality and yeah, we're cleaning concepts, but you know, we, st we still feel like we love each other and and in phase four, it's like, no, I'm going to reach, I'm going to pass the barrier, I'm going to use you guys, I'm going to become so egoistic. And phase three looks and says, like, well, what the heck? Well, I don't agree with that. That's not what I'm going for. I'm going for altruism. I'm not going for this egoism. What's this nonsense about? So you get this dichotomy between each of the phases. Thank you. All right, I think we'll end here and uh, enter the after party. <laughs>